Hello and welcome to Online Worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this Christmas Sunday. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so glad that you're here on this very special Sunday to worship with us. If this is your first time to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we are especially pleased that you've chosen to worship with us today. We would love for you to fill out our contact form. It's pinned right in the comment section. We encourage everybody who's here for online worship to do that. There's a place there for you, of course, to put your contact information so that we can be in touch with you, so that we can uh, walk beside you in your ministry and your life of faith and help connect you with small groups and with worship and with uh, service opportunities, all of those things. There's also a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team so that we can be in prayer with you. So please use that contact form. When we do gather for worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that simply means that we are going to participate in what we're doing here in online worship. So we encourage you to put aside other distractions and devices, really focus in on our time of worship. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, pray. When it's time to listen really carefully, listen really carefully and just fully participate with all that you are and all that you have. And then we also covenant to be a blessing. And that means that in the way that we uh, communicate with one another in the comment section, the way that we're with the people we're worshiping with online, in our household and in the community, that all of that experience is going to be a wonderful blessing to everyone involved. Now, one of our favorite things to do together as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is share the love and peace of Jesus Christ. And we do that by saying, peace be with you and responding, and also with you. I encourage you to do that in the comment section with the folks that you're gathered with in your household. Share the peace of Christ be, uh, with me. Peace be with you and also with you. And we're going to be led in this also by our Sunday coffee hour class. Let's hear from them. Hi, I'm Lori Payne Mullet, and uh, this is the Sunday morning coffee group. I'm here to wish you peace. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Ann Burton, and I chair the staff parish committee. Peace be with you. And peace be with you, Ann. I'm Connie Sims. I'm on the staff parish committee, and I want to wish peace with you. And also with you. I'm Jim Bogue. I'm one of the handbell writers. And I want to wish everybody peace be with you. And also with you, Jim. Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm the lay leader at Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. And I say peace be with you, Kathy. And also with you. I'm Kathy Lambda, and yeehaw, I'm also a member of the Staff Parish Committee meeting, and also a bike rider for the His Home. And also with you, um, I'm Janet Chesko. I'm on the Missions Committee. Um, I help Wibble Delivery, and um, I'm in Lydia Circle, and peace be with you. And also with you, Janet, and I'm Margaret Ann, the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue, and peace be with you. And also with you, I'm Sarah Button, and I'm on the Finance Committee. Peace be with all of you. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, and I am the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in singing, There's a Song in the Air.
Lori Payne Mullet, and I serve on the SPRC and the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Please join me in our opening prayer. Loving God, it's been over 2,000 years ago since you came to earth, and at times we become immune, O oh God, to your love that was born. Startle us with the reality of your humanness. Reawaken us this Christmas season to be in awe at your coming. May our wonder surpass what consumes our lives as we look with fresh awareness at who you are. As we worship you this morning, open our hearts and focus our eyes to your goodness, and may that goodness change us. May your coming amaze us. Amen. In the first light of a new day, no one knew he had arrived. Things continued as they had been, while a newborn softly cried. But the heavens, wrapped in wonder, knew the meaning of his birth. In the weakness of a baby, they knew God had come to earth. As his mother held him closely, it was hard to understand that her baby, not yet speaking, was the word of God to man. He would tell them of his kingdom, but their hearts would not believe. They would hate him, and in anger, they would nail him to a tree. But the sadness would be broken when the song of life arose and the firstborn of creation would ascend to take the throne he had left it to redeem us but before his life began he knew he'd come back not as a baby but as the Lord of every man. Hear the angels as they're singing on the morning of his birth. But how much greater will their song be when he comes again to earth? Hear the angels as they're singing on the morning of his birth. But how much greater will our song be when he comes again to us? When he comes to rule the My name is Annie Jessup. My mom is a pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, Margaret Ann. Um, I am here today to show you my favorite ornament. This is my first year in my apartment alone, so this is my very first tree. I love it so much. Um, this year I've been working as a COVID ICU nurse, so um, this coffee cup here is my favorite ornament. Coffee has been one of the things that has kept me going this year. Also, the support from my Douglas Avenue family. Um, this year has been really difficult for me, and at times I really did question my relationship with God. Um, I felt that it was me versus God in these dark times. I was having trouble seeing God. Um, but my Douglas Avenue family continually supported me, wrote me cards, letters, and it really reminded me that this journey is more me and God versus COVID, not me versus God. 
um, and that's really helped me and it will continue to help me through um, this season, this holiday season, as well as um, seeing this virus through. I just got um, signed up to get my vaccine, so I'm starting to see the light and um, I'm very excited about that. Thank you for letting me share. You know what time it is, everyone. It's time for Small Talk. This is one of our favorite parts of online worship. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So kids, you want to get in really close to your screen, to your device, so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with Small Talk. And then we're going to also enjoy a very special piece of music that is brought to us by Leah Philbrick and Becca Philbrick playing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So get in close for all of this wonderfulness with Spall Talk and our special music. Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great Christmas. Hold on, Laud, just a second. Laud has three presents he still hasn't opened yet. So we thought we would share with you some of the things that Laud hasn't opened yet. He got really tired on Christmas and fell asleep, so I said we'd do it today. All right, you wanna do the first one? Oh, careful. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, careful, careful, careful. There we go. Oh, he's got a duck. Yeah, he got a nice Christmas duck. Not to eat. Don't eat the duck. Got a Christmas duck. Let's see. What else do we have? You want to do this one next? It's not quite as big as this one. Let's see. What, what, do, we, what do we have? We have oh, another duck. I might have lost part of a foot. So we have two ducks. Now, who's guessing that maybe this is a goose? Hmm. Oh, why? Guess who this one's from? No guess? It says it's from God. Could it be? Oh, definitely not a goose. Here, Lloyd, see. See what gift we have. Let's, let's kind of, kind of, we're doing really well here. Pardon me, one second. Hey, Lod, it's baby Jesus. That is our gift, which is really the best gift of Christmas from God, right? These two ducks are very nice and special, but baby Jesus, is what it's all about, and that's the best gift we could have gotten for Christmas. What do you think, Lod? Yeah? Have a nice smile for everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Hope you had a great Christmas, and we're looking forward to a new year. Bye-bye. <laughs> My name is Malia Schmidt and I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and I'm also the inventory and special project coordinator for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. 
The scripture reading today is from the book of Luke, the second chapters, and the selected verses are from 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless our hearing and understanding of this reading from the Bible. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is a joy to be with you today and bring you the Word of God. And just think, Christmas was just two days ago. The next time that we'll be together, it will be the year 2021. And most of us are ready for 2020 to be gone. Many say, I cannot wait for life to get back to normal. Can one go back to normal? How do we go back if we're moving forward? And most believe there'll be a new normal. You've heard that said. But I wonder how can it be normal if it's new? Hmm. Here's some more. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's the same difference to me. Can something be same and different? The same difference. If it's different, it's not the same right? What about when you're taking a photo? How many times have you been posing for a photo when somebody says, oh, act normal, act normal. If you have to act, I just wonder, is that normal? Sometimes I will ask the wouldn't it be lovely accountant. I'll call her up and I'll say, can you give me an exact estimate of our balance? Can something be exact and an estimate? I've been known to ask Carol to copy and scan or email something for me, and I'll say, if you don't mind, could you please put the original copy on my desk? Can something be copied and be an original? What's an original copy? All of these examples are odd or funny, how we use words, some are oxymorons, but nonetheless, we know exactly, or we know mostly, what they mean. 
All of this has me thinking as we move into the year 2021. The way that we use words and how we choose to put words together changes meanings. Words carry an enormous weight that can change or define how we understand something. The power of words is beyond expression. Think about that. I'm going to discuss the story of Simeon and Anna that Malia read for us. And while discussing it, I'm gonna to point to four very interesting word combinations, words that I think will help me tell the story and help me articulate what it is the story means to us in 2021. If you'll join with me in prayer. Oh God, we are so grateful for your word. We're grateful to be together in this way. I ask, oh God, that you be with me as I deliver this sermon. You are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Here's the first set of words. Blessedly poor. Most would not initially think that being poor is a blessing, but listen to the story. Following the birth of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, who were good law-abiding Jews, take their child to be circumcised on the eighth day, and they hear a prophecy about who he is and what is going to happen to him, the meaning of his life. And on this important trip to the temple, Scripture tells us that they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law. They gave two young pigeons. Joseph and Mary's sacrifice was not a lamb, which would have been customary for most in those days, but a pair of two young pigeons. In the book of Leviticus, which Mary and Joseph knew well, it was directed that if someone is too poor to offer a lamb, a turtle dove or two pigeons could be offered at the time of purification. Only those with no choice because of lack of resources would offer birds at this very special time. It seems that they were poor, but nonetheless, we're also told that Simeon saw the glory of God in baby Jesus. Prophecy was fulfilled. This child was blessed by the Spirit of God through Simeon. So this baby, the fulfillment of prophecy that we lay our life on, the Messiah, was blessed by God through Simeon, but was poor. In our society, most don't think about those who are poor or living in poverty as being blessed. But we know that Jesus' life in Scripture reminds us this differently. Jesus came for the salvation of all of us, but especially the poor. So that makes a lot of sense. Maybe this scripture can help us look at those who are poor differently. I have an illustration. When Wouldn't It Be Lovely just started, the Illinois Times newspaper decided to run a story on the ministry, and they interviewed one of the women. And this particular woman, woman that they interviewed had five children. The father of the five ch children was in prison. She had no skills, no income whatsoever, and had no way to make money, which is um, essentially why we hired her, of course. So she fit our program perfectly. But when the Illinois Times did this article after interviewing her, they caught, made in the headline or the caption under her photo that she was poor. They used that word. When the newspaper came out, this particular woman was so excited to see her picture in a newspaper, and she shared it with a family member. And this family member called and was so angry, said, you are not poor. Why did they call you poor? And in her mind and in her family member's mind, they had everything. They had children, they had love, they at that time had a roof over their head, and they had their faith in God. They were not poor, they were blessed. The situation changed how I see the poor and especially how I hope I continue to articulate when I'm working with those in poverty. It's a reminder that things and money are not what matters to God. The next set of words is glorified with pain. The scriptures were clear. Jesus was the glory of God, but life, his life was full of pain. That seems kind of confusing, doesn't it? If God's favor was upon him, which were the last words that Malia read, God's favor was upon him, why also pain? That seems confusing. 
glorified with pain. As we reviewed a minute ago, Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple to be circumcised, and it is there they met Simeon. Simeon is sort of a holy man, something of a prophet, and he's been waiting his whole life for the baby Jesus to be brought to the temple. Simeon was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the baby Jesus. And Simeon, when he sees the baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph, and he knows at once, and Simeon says to them, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and he is destined to be a sign of goodness. He is full of glory. But then at the same time, he tells Mary, the mama, that a sword will pierce your soul also. Simeon tells Mary and Joseph that their precious newborn son will lead a life of greatness and glory. But his life and yours life too, mom, will be filled with hurt and pain. A reminder that there is great goodness in the midst of pain. And because of that, this story reminds us that in the struggles that lie ahead, that, that the struggles that will not disappear, but those struggles matter to God. Our struggles matter so much to God that God has come into the world as this baby Jesus as a way to bring glory to us and to show us that he is with us in pain, someone to share our struggles with. The next set of words that I have selected is expect surprises. Question, if you expect it, is it a surprise? In the story, Simeon tells us to expect to be surprised. Mostly we think that things that come to us unexpectedly, well, can't be a surprise, but this tells us they can. Scripture tells us that Simeon, upon seeing the baby Jesus, was surprised and amazed. He recognized in the baby Jesus the long-awaited Messiah. Simeon was a devout and righteous man on whom the Holy Spirit rested. The Spirit had planted in his heart that the people of Israel, his people, would not know God's comfort and hope until this baby was born. He yearned for many years. The Spirit revealed to him that he would not die before seeing the Messiah with his own eyes. And the Spirit led him to go to the temple on that very day. And he opened his eyes to recognize the child Jesus as the Messiah God had promised. Simeon took that baby in his arms and praised God, declaring, Master, now your servant can depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Meaning, I can die now. I have seen the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Simeon's testimony is corroborated by another person in the temple, an old woman, a prophet named Anna. Anna had been widowed after only seven years of marriage. Ever since until now, at the age of 84, she spent every day and every night of her life in the temple, praying and fasting. Like Simeon, she'd been watching and waiting to see God fulfill what God had promised. She too had lived for weeks, months, and years, expectant and hopeful to be surprised. Once she recognized the baby as a long-awaited Messiah, she ran around in amazement and surprise, telling everybody that would listen. Simeon and Anna, in their old age, were jumping around like little children, surprised what they got on this particular Christmas morning. What a great lesson. Expect to be surprised. Simeon and Anna can teach us that as we move into the year 2021, we have to live a life in a way that we expect the amazing power of God. We have to look around to see it. We have to be willing and open. We have to have our hearts open to be surprised every day to see God. Early in, my service, early in this service, my daughter Annie shared with you her favorite Christmas ornament and a short testimony. With her permission, I want to say more. She spoke briefly about her faith struggles in the midst of the COVID crisis. But I'm here to tell you, at the beginning of the COVID in the ICU, she longed to see Christ. She was almost as desperate, I think, as Simeon. As her mother, I could only listen. 
So many nights after her shift, she would call. Her words would truly break my heart. She even one day told me that being a pastor makes no sense, that Jesus doesn't change anything. At first, what she saw in the ICU was darkness and what felt like hopeless, surrounded by fear. But day after day, she kept going and she kept hoping and expecting that something would change. She went to counseling, she took medicine, she drank a whole lot of coffee, anything to get through the pain of what she felt in the ICU. She grew up in church and had a basic faith foundation. That kept her mind open, I think, to expect that there was more. She expected something. Her foundation of faith kept her thinking that Jesus just had to show up. She didn't know what that meant, but she kept her heart open. After about six months in, seeing many, many COVID deaths and holding phones so family could speak and talk to dying loved ones, one more time, she was surprised. Surprised that something changed in her heart. Surprised that she began to see the situation differently. She began to understand and feel that God was with her, not against her. She began to be surprised what she expected was somehow true. And I believe that by the Spirit of God and a lot of prayers from many, she began to realize that she was one of many that God was using to help the broken in this situation. She expected him to show up, and he did. God was there with her and all over the COVID ICUs all over the world, and admitting that, after months and months of questioning, surprised her. All I know is I thank God that she was willing and open to see the surprise that came with this. Thank you for surprising her. I expected that. My last set of words is small fortune. When we think of a fortune, I think of something big, a whole bunch. So the term having a small fortune seems odd, but does it? But not really. The Messiah for us was just that, a small fortune. The Messiah comes to bring us everything we need, Christ's hope and salvation, but not the way that we might have expected. The power of the Messiah is not through the strength of a king or a mighty emperor somewhere. The Messiah brings our fortune to us in a small baby, a baby born into a broken world full of poverty and racism and viruses and disease and discrimination, born into this world to give us hope. And when we have that hope, we truly do have a small fortune. For me, that small fortune is God's love. Love, as Simeon and Anna told us, that came as this small, small little baby, humble, helpless baby. Love that doesn't force its way into our hearts, but is there waiting for us. Love that faces opposition, but keeps on loving us. Love that refuses to retaliate and seeks peace. Love that embraces enemies and seeks out the lost. Love that we put in our hearts and then we go out and share with others. Love that truly is, no matter how we word it or what words we put together, is our very own small fortune. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please join us in What Child Is This?
We now have an opportunity to join together in prayer, and I encourage you to use your contact form to put prayer requests there that will go to our pastors and to our prayer team, and you can also put your prayers into the comment section. Please join with me now in prayer. God of mystery and love, Help us move from the sweet experience of the birth of the Christ child into the reality of the powerful witness of Jesus who will be Messiah for us all. Remind us again that this season is not really about bows and boxes and feasts. It is about preparing us, your people, for a mission and ministry of hope and peace for this aching and angry world. Empower us to be people of great faith, like Simeon and Anna, placing our trust in you, believing that the transformation of our circumstances and world is not only possible, it truly can happen if we will work with you and with one another. We hold up to you the prayers of our hearts, our concerns for those near and dear to us. We pray especially for all who are sick, all who are in the hospital, all who are struggling with addiction, all who are feeling alone, all who are grieving. We hold close all who work in health care and essential services in our community for their safety, rest, and rejuvenation. As we lift all of these concerns with our voices and in the silence of our hearts, remind us that you receive each and every prayer and that you respond with love to each one. Loving God, help us to be in prayer with one another, for one another, for our church and our community, for our nation and our world, for all Earth's peoples and creatures, that we may be those who promote peace. Give us courage and strength as we head into this new year. Help us reach across areas that divide, offering compassionate assistance wherever it is needed. Bless each one of us in your service. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. And please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the special ways that we share love and the light of Christ with others is through our generous giving. And your generous financial gifts have made all the difference for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in the way that we're able to be in ministry to our community, our neighborhood, and to the world, the way we're able to offer online worship and small groups and so much service and opportunity for ministry. Thank you for your generous financial giving, and we want to encourage you to continue in that. You can send in your offerings by using our online uh, portal that's on our web page and the link for that will be right in the comment section. You can set up automatic um, gifts with your financial institution, with our financial institution. Just uh, let us know in the church office if you need some help with that. And also you can send in your checks to our church office and we just are so grateful for the way that you continue to give. Um, you still have an opportunity, if you have not yet done so, to give into our special Christmas mission offering. This year we are sharing those financial gifts with Chaddix Children's Home and also with Helping Hands of Springfield that provides uh, homeless services for folks experiencing homelessness. And so please give generously if you've not done that already. You can again use the online giving portal for that. There's a special drop down menu for special offerings for that. Or or you can send in your check to the church office. Just write Christmas mission offering in the memo line and we'll get that going the right direction. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you so much for this outpouring of love. Thank you for the way that we can be in ministry together in this special way. Good morning, I'm Pat Brown and I'm with Karis, my granddaughter, and we're going to invite you all to join us for our last hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, it's number 224. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice give ye to what we say news news Jesus Christ is born today oxen us before him bow and he is in the manger now cry 
Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we hear of endless bliss. News, news, Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door and he are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. I want to thank you for joining us in worship today. I hope that there was something in song, in prayer, in the word that opened your heart to see things in a new way, a way as we go into the new year that you will be able to live with a little more closeness and love in your heart. I do encourage you to complete the contact form if you haven't already, that it is important as we continue to try to stick together in these times. Before I go, I just want to say one more thing. As many of you know, that in 2021, I will become appointed full-time to Wouldn't It Be Lovely. I've tried to think of a word or a set of words to describe that emotion. And as I said in the letter that I wrote, that it is bittersweet. I'm getting to be more and more excited about this change. But I just want to explain a little bit about how I feel. The bitter comes because I love each and every one of you, that you have seen me kind of grow up in ministry and it has been my greatest, one of my greatest joys to be your pastor. But it also is quite sweet. How many pastors get a new appointment, but they get to stay in the same building? They get to continue to participate at times in worship and get to continue to worship with you. So that is a wonderful thing, and that is very sweet. I personally get to mentor and grow the program that is the passion of my heart. I have so many hopes and dreams for Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and I need the extra time and energy to be able to have those dreams come true. And the last thing that is sweet is you are being served by Pastor Meredith. And I know from looking at Facebook and being in communications with clergy all over that there has been nobody put in more time and energy to try to get to know a congregation, to keep them connected during a pandemic, and to do everything in her power to keep the family of Christ at Douglas Avenue together. So that is a sweet thing for all of you. So I don't know if the word is bittersweet or honestly, I don't really have a better word. So I'm gonna leave it at that, telling you that I love you dearly and the future is so bright. Keep together as a church family um, and there are so many things that this wonderful church has in its future. So I ask you to be ready to be amazed and surprised as you go out into this world to love God more and serve your neighbor. Amen. Thank you.